Hey guys, welcome to Master That Solo number four. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play the guitar solo to play with me from Extreme's first album. Also features a kind of arrangement of it in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, of course. Um, so this is a this is a classic bit of blistering uh, neural playing. Uh, I'm a half step down, like a lot of extreme stuff. I've got E flat here in the string, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. And it kicks off uh, with a phrase that sounds like this. So this opening sequence is a classic bit of uh, Nuno Slight Hand. Whereas you may think he's picking all these notes, it's actually using uh, his percussive legato, a kind of technique, I guess, maybe influenced by Aldo Mueller, who knows, but um, it's something that features a lot in Nuno's playing and I've mentioned in other lessons. So the key to this sort of opening phrase is making sure you've got a palm mute in this high E string here. So I'm palm muting and I'm close to that bridge saddle there. So I'm not killing the string, but I've still got enough resonance in the, the, you know, the open string. Then what I'm going to be doing is thinking of the left hand and think of the left hand driving this, not the right hand. Um, what you're going to do is hammer on from nowhere on the beat. So I'm hammering on like just fifth fret there. Okay. Then I do a pull off and then I do up, down. Okay, that's your kind of pattern. Hammer, pull off, up, down. What you end up with there is one, two, three, four you know, four notes. So when you begin to speed up, you get that kind of effect with it, yeah? So the thing to watch out for here is, if you think of the right hand driving it, you might end up using that downstroke as kind of an accent and then just naturally start f picking the fretted note with the downstroke, which is not what you want. You want to think of this left hand hammer driving it. Okay? so. The notes that we're actually playing here, if I take it bar per bar, your first little uh, bar, you're going to be doing 5, 7, 8, 10 on that high E string. Yeah. Next bar, you come down, you go 8, 7, 5, 4. Okay. Next bar, you're doing 5, 7, 8, 7. Yeah. Then you're going to go 5, 4, Five, seven. Then we jump up to twelfth fret, tenth, eighth, seventh. So we've got a little descending thing here. Then we go up to tenth, eighth, seventh, five. Okay, and that's kind of your opening sequence. So slowly that whole thing sounds like this. Now after I've done this bit, we have the next section, sounds like this. Okay, so I'm playing like a little comedy ending here, so I'll play fifth fret. Now, you've just come at this from doing like a hammer, up, down. So I think I'm playing a downstroke here in that five. Yeah, and obviously it's kind of like, almost like a full stop. Then I'm going to play five in the B string three times. Then I play six five in that B string. I'm going to go back to five though, it's the pinch harmonic. So you're aiming for a kind of pitch like that, it's almost like two octaves plus a third. Dip with the bar, and then do four five in the high E string. And then kind of slide it off. Okay? So, that's the first section. Really awesome, classic way to kind of start the solo. Let's have a look at the next section. So now we get into the first of our kind of pedal sections. So what we're doing here is effectively um, outlining some very classical sounding harmony. You've kind of got like an E, kind of E7 kind of sound here with a flat nine, then you go into an A. Then you've got this kind of little diminished chord lead into the like B minor, and then B major. Yeah. So the first little uh, arpeggio we're going to play uh, note wise, it's 9, 7, 9 on the G string. 
and I've got six and a nine in the B string. So that's like on the root, flat seven. It's like a flat nine, like a major third. You know, so it's just kind of like a dominant kind of sound. The pattern that we're doing here though is I'm gonna do, I think a triplet here. So that's my first triplet. I'm doing a pull off nine to seven back and hammering back to nine. Play that by the downstroke. Next triplet is six in the B string. Nine in the G, six in the B string. Yeah. Next little triplet, I do the pull off nine to six in the B string and play nine in the G string. Yeah. Again, you can start with a downstroke and an upstroke in the G string. And then the last little triplet basically is doing six on the B string, nine, seven in the G string. So slowly all that together goes. Okay. Now as usual, Nuno, no, you might have a little slight pan mute here just to control it. Yeah. But basically we play that twice. Then we're going to change the harmony to this A. And what I'm going to be doing here basically is doing 9, 6, 9 in the G string. I've used the fourth, fourth to first finger here because what I'm going to be doing is jump up to fifth fret on the high E string and ninth fret. So basically what you're playing here is like, that's the third, that's the root, that's your third, fifth, root, third. You know, Nuno likes these little kind of uh, two string, string skip kind of arpeggio ideas. So basically uh, it's the same pattern with that. Yeah. But now you've got a string skip in there which adds just a little bit of a challenge to it. So when you're working in this, See if you can try and keep it as clean as possible. So you're not hitting the B string and you're not missing kind of the strings. How you pick it is quite important here. As I said, I've got a recommended picking there of like a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You know, which might work for you. When I'm actually playing at speed, I probably do something a little bit different. But whatever works, as long as you get it nice and kind of clean. So that's with the A. Going to do one bar of that. Then I'm going to jump up to this little diminished arpeggio. So what I'm playing here note wise is 9 12 uh, on the G string, 9 12 on the high E string. But the pattern's the same. I start 12th fret of that G string. I use my fourth finger. Do the, you know, the pull off hammer on. Then I'm going to do 9 in the high E string, 12 in the G, back up. Then I've got my 12, 9, 12 in the high E string. Sorry, don't do a pull off there. Yeah, so it's. And then we have my 9, 12, 9 in the G string. Okay, from there, now we go down to B minor. So the frets I'm playing here are 7 and 11 on the G string, 7 and 10 in the high E string. Same pattern. Okay. There's a little uh, quirk here when he does the transition. He actually moves to that eighth fret in the very last note of that bar, but that's just because it's been played at speed. So he's anticipating moving to this B major arpeggio here. And the only difference between the B minor and the B major is that minor third becomes a major third. So instead of playing seven on the G, you play eight in the G. So you have this. And then you've got this major third up here as well. Don't forget about that one. So 11th fret and the high E string. Okay. So that's your kind of arpeggio sequence slowly. Uh, it sounds like this. Okay, as I said, that little transition there. You might move that finger up to get the major third. Next little bit sounds like this. So in this section we're effectively playing a little chromatic idea on the, the G string. Note wise what I'm going to be doing is doing little slide pairs. I'm going to slide 9 to 8. The G string first off. I use my third finger for this. Then I do 8 to 7. You know 7 to 6. 6 to 5. 5 to 4. Okay that's kind of the notes that we're playing there. Um, interspersed with them, we're going to be playing like uh, a palm mute on the bass string. So you've got like a palm mute in the A there. 
On the recording, you can hear that he kind of hits like the E for those notes there. But I think generally he's just aiming for like a kind of percussive hit in between these little slides. Okay. The other thing we're doing, of course, we're playing these with pinch harmonics. And the area of the fingerboard is pretty much the same for that pinch harmonic. Um, the other thing that's interesting is live, he typically plays it like that. So you've got these slides. On the recording, the original, you can hear he's actually playing like, sounds like little bends before each little slide. So I think what he's probably doing is just digging in quite hard and he's just bending the string to kind of, when he hits that pinch harmonic. So when you're trying that, that if you want to do the, as a recording, that's what you can aim for. Hit the pinch harmonic, bend up, and then kind of slide to the next fret. Okay, next section sounds like this. So we're back to arpeggios again, outlining that harmony, but we play them in a slightly different way this time. So first off, we've got a bit more palm mute in here, so every note sounds like it's been picked, but we're still using legato here. And the sequence is, uh, instead of doing triplets now, triplet eighths, we're in sixteenth notes. And you come in actually on the end of the beat. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm going to do the hammer on up to six on that uh, B string. Then I'm going to do a pull off nine six back to nine in the G string. Then I do that again. And then I end it with the seventh at the end there. So it's not like you're doing like groups of three notes. It's all continuous sixteenths. Yeah, that's the thing that's kind of weird about it, but it's the same notes basically. So you do two bars of that, make sure you get that rest at the beginning and the end. Uh, the transition here actually again, you, you might go to the sixth fret here, you can see in the transcription, you kind of hits the sixth fret as you get to the end, but he's transitioning now. Kind of the A major arpeggio. So the thing about this is it puts um, even more of a challenge compared to playing in triplets, I think, but you have to quickly get up to the high E string and back down. Same pattern. I'm using my first and fourth finger there just to get that. You might want to do one, three, one, four, whatever kind of feels comfortable. Then I take that and go up to our diminished arpeggio, same notes, but I'm doing that. Yeah. Then we go to the B major arpeggio. So we start off with 16th up to that point. So you're kind of going up and down the arpeggio. Then after that, it's triplets. So you kind of just change the rhythm of it a little bit there. I wouldn't worry too much about it. When you're playing this at tempo, it kind of happens naturally because you're switching into this kind of triplet mode again. But you can think of it if you want to break it down like that. So you've got 16th there, then 8th notes, yeah. Uh, so after we do that, then we go to the B major. I'm going to play that twice. So slowly that whole section sounds like this. Next section sounds like this. So finally get to the kind of big fancy climactic lick of the end. And this is all basically an E major arpeggio. Um, the way that we're going to be playing it though is with some string skips. But we start off by playing like again, if you think of your E major uh, kind of triad, that's a root note there, that's a third, that's a fifth, that's a root, etc. you know. So I start on the major third tier, okay. So what I'm going to be playing here is like hammer on 11 to 14 uh, and then play 14 on that uh, D string there. But I think I used uh, my first and fourth finger. Picking wise, you may want to do that uh, with a downstroke and an upstroke. I think I played it with economy picking, so I did like a down, down like that. Yeah, so that's your first three notes. Then I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is jump from here 
into our little string skip arpeggio shape. So I go up to 14th fret on the, uh, the G string here. It's like a major third. And I'm going to hammer to the 16th fret there. So I'm playing my third and fifth there. So the thing that's awkward about this is just the transition, I guess. Yeah. Again, if you're keeping your kind of down up, you'd start this bit with a down stroke. Okay. Now, again, you can think of uh, little groups of three, your triplets here, so that's your first three. This triplet is, so I'm doing my 14, sorry, 13, 16, and then 12 in the high E string. Yeah. Then what I'm gonna do, next triplet is pull off 16 to 12 in that high E string. Use my fourth finger there, of course. And again, you can start those with the downstroke. And then play 16 on that G string. That's my three notes there. Then I'm going to do 13 to 16 again. To 12, like that. And then after this, I'm going to play 16th fret and slide up, basically up to this kind of uh, B, so this fifth here. So I'm on like uh, the third again of your E. I'm going to slide up to 19 and back, but it's quite quick. It's hard to play slow actually, but that back to 16, and I'm going to pull off to 12. So really, that's like four notes, but or a bunch of notes, but really, it's a triplet. What you're playing, hearing is this. Yeah, but you have to slide back, pull off to 12. Then I descend down the C major arpeggio. So I'm going to do 16, 12, pull off on the high E string, 16 on the G, then 12 on the high E. Pull off, 16, 13 in the G string. Then pull off again, 16 to 13, to 14 in the D string. Little groups of three. Yeah. Next little triad bit, uh, 13 in that G string. Then I'm gonna do 14th fret the D string. Now fingering wise, I do first finger, second finger, and then I play that B on the A string, 14th fret the A string with the first finger. This just sets me up to then use the second finger again to play 14, and then four on the D string, 14 in the A, slide to the major third, 11th fret that A string there. Yeah. Then I play that again, and then 12 in the E string root note, slide down to the seventh fret here, and then I play the open E string, and I dip with a bar, you know, pretty much until it goes slack. So slowly that section sounds like this. Okay, and that's it. So, this is an awesome solo. Um, you know, it's definitely, you know, all guns blazing during this solo. So there's lots of little things to take from it. Um, again, Nuno Bancourt is used to this percussive palm muting to make it sound like you've got a lot more notes being picked than actually happening. So it has this nice machine gun effect. It's probably this Al Di Miola influence in his playing. Again, you hear it in your know, Flight of the Wounded Bumblebee and all this sort of stuff with the delay. It's this kind of, you know, machine gun effect to the, the kind of picking. Um, you've got your string skip arpeggios, of course. Nuno's a master of those. Doesn't really sweep arpeggios. Uses a lot of uh, string skipping. Um, these are great, particularly, again, if you use a little bit of your palm mute there. So the punch have a bit more of a kind of picked kind of feel to them. Um, and then I guess we've got this classic uh, big arpeggio one at the end. So this is a really great way of sequencing through and a Peugeot like that, basically, all the way up and all the way down using string skipping, okay? So have fun with that, guys. Hopefully that uh, is helpful to you. Um, if you want access to uh, some more additional lesson materials with this backing track, uh, essentially, basically the phrases broken down or the sound slice tab so you can loop things and practice it, please check out uh, Master the Guitar on Patreon. I'll put the link for it up there. Uh, you can also follow Master the Guitar on uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, Instagram as well. And if you're not subscribed and you want to see more lessons like this or look at the back catalogue because there's a lot of stuff up there, please uh, check out uh, Master the Guitar YouTube channel, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell if you want to be kept up to date as well with any uploads that I do. Uh, so thanks for watching guys, have fun with that, enjoy getting it up to speed because it is uh, a lot of fun to play. So see you soon.